everybody. Welcome to Rachel's Reviews. Today we are having another episode of Obscure Animation where we're talking about an underpraised, underseen, uh, obscure, however you want to define it, animated film. We do this once a month and it's really fun. And today we are talking about one of the DC animated films. And uh, we're particularly talking about Superman, Man of Tomorrow. But I think it's going to be really fun overall to talk about uh, the Warner, the Warner Brothers DC uh, animated films that they do, uh, which ones we've seen, which ones we've enjoyed, uh, and how we feel about this particular film. And I'm really excited to talk about it. I'm film critic Rachel Wagner, and Stanford's here. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Hey, all as well. Thank you. I'm excited to talk about this movie with you. Yeah, it's gonna be really interesting. They they pack a ton of story in to this what 85 minute film yeah this film impressive. was action-packed it really yeah, was. It was not a frame was wasted for no sure uh and what has been your history with the uh the dc animated films you know, uh, i you watched much I honestly i bet you rachel i have watched five or less mm-hmm. you know or five or fewer i just have not it's really not in my wheelhouse. So yeah. I was I had a lot of fun with this. I have to say that the ones that I've watched before, I I, I just think I found a little they're a, a little hit and miss. I mm-hmm. uh, for for me again, not being a real um, aficionado, you know, in in, in any way, uh, and and also uh, I think I think this just generally DC tends to skew a little uh, um, dark on the, mm-hmm. on, you know, thematically. Yeah. And uh, I think that the, the last one I saw was Batman, the killing joke, which <gasps> that was, was horrible. Terrible. You know, horrible. I hated that. Yeah. Um, I hated that. But, yeah. but uh, you know, some of the other ones have been, I think, I think there was a Justice League one I saw that was mm-hmm. pretty, you know, pretty entertaining. I think that the animation that they do is decent. You yeah, know? that's one thing about the one we're going to talk about. I actually thought the animation was pretty poor um, in this one compared to what I typically see yeah. out of DC animation. Yeah, I mean, this is just standard Flash TV yes. say, animation. Like the, you're, watching, you're watching a TV show mm-hmm. is what it felt like. And usually me. I feel like the ones that I've seen are a little more cinematic in feel than this i mean they're not going to win like awards or anything but they're more than this uh and so that was surprising to me about this movie i mean certainly the the both of the wonder woman movies that i've seen have had much better animation than this uh and those are both pretty good both of the wonder woman movies um i also liked justice justice league dark Uh, i thought that that was a good one i don't think that that movie needed to be uh, needed to be a Batman movie. I don't think that, I think it would have made more sense actually to have Wonder Woman be in that movie. Yeah. As far as her personality and skills. Yeah. But, you know, they just got to have Batman. Um, and mm-hmm. uh, and then I've watched, I recently, as part of Hidden Gems, I watched Batman and Joker. Okay. That one was, was pretty good. That was good. Uh, and I've seen Batman versus Robin. I liked that. Uh, that was interesting. It, um, it had a, um, a different Robin than I've ever seen before, which I guess is a part of this uh, this timeline in, in the comics. I, uh, uh, Damon Wayne, Wade, Wayne, something like that. Anyway, I'm going to get over. Anyway, had a different Robin than I had ever seen before. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it has the whole court of owls in that, which is pretty cool and uh, in an interesting concept and design um and this is the first actually superman animated superman movie that i've seen it yeah see i can i was just trying to remember it's been it's just been a while you know so uh if any if there's as a child i i wasn't a necessarily a huge comic book reader but you know i enjoyed them every once in a while and I, i i always liked superman ones i think partly yeah uh maybe again i could be remembering this incorrectly rachel but it seemed like at least the superman 
comics that I read as a child were not nearly as dark as, as Batman. <laughs> no, I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. I, I, I'm general and more of a Superman fan yeah, than I, I am like a Superman. Batman fan. Yeah, I did. Which I think is unusual. I don't know. I just find the optimism and the, uh, the, uh, the decision by Superman to stay uh, mm-hmm. and to serve is such a, yeah. A it's so movie. admirable yeah it's so admirable yeah and uh some people say that he's too much of a boy scout i don't agree with that i, I feel like he is somebody who struggles to know how to use his powers yeah and i think when it's done well it can be really really moving and interesting to i think see. so too mm-hmm. and he's a character that acts out of out of nobility mm-hmm. you know and, and out of and out of really good intent yeah and uh that's I think that's something that's, that that appeals to me mm-hmm. too. Do you yeah. like the original uh, Christopher Reeves uh, films? Overall, I mean, I, I I really I like the very I like the first one in particular, with the mm-hmm. exception of when he uh, reverses the Earth's uh, yeah, rotation. The end. Mm-hmm. I thought that was I mean he's Superman he can do what he wants but. That one bugged me. Like, why are you killing Lois Lane? That sucks. But um, but yeah. uh, that other, but otherwise, you know, the John Williams score and oh. and uh, you know, and I thought, and I thought his origin was so cool. I loved those scenes with Marlon Brando, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. as Charrel and and uh, that wonderful set. Of My favorite. Solitude. I do think it takes a little while to get going the movie oh it's slow i think it's a little Absolutely. slow at the beginning oh, it's very slow but i love all the interactions between lois and clark i love yeah. it i love their banter i love they go on this little date and they're flying and and i i just think that's so great yeah. really fun I, I and agree. so i'm i'm with you there i also enjoy superman 2 particularly the donner cut even though it's sort of rough to watch uh, you know, certain parts aren't finished and it looks a yes. little weird, but I still, uh, I, I like the story. And I think that it does a lot of things in the Donner cut that I wish Man of Steel did. I mean, cause they have a lot of similar elements, obviously Zod's in both. Um, right. but there's things like he is actually pretty, uh, brutal in the way that he treats Zod in Superman 2. He basically practically squeezes his, his hands and breaks his hand and and yeah. uh, all that stuff and and there are, there are comparable events to Zod's snap neck in Superman two but the thing I think that makes it so different is that in Superman two the carnage is more minimalized as far as right. it's just it's just for this and it doesn't matter the amount of carnage I'm talking about the time on screen and when <laughs> Uh, in in Man of Steel, it's just oh. so long, and by the time that it gets to Zod Snap Neck, I'm exhausted. I don't care anymore. They've lost I, me as yeah. a viewer. And I know that the whole destroyed city plays into you know the further on of that particular film series, but mm-hmm. I was too. I was I was saying I was exhausted, and I also it just felt like this wasn't the Superman that I admired as a kid. No. You know, and uh, I mean, I know they're trying to make him modern and even, even dare I say edgy, but, but uh, it, yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it didn't work for me. No. And in fairness, they never really gave the Superman a shot. Like I feel bad for Henry Cavill because I don't think he ever really got to be Superman in any mm-hmm. of these movies. I mean, Man of Steel is all about him be choosing. And by the end, he decides that he is going to become Superman. And so he never really gets, because there's no Man of Steel 2, there was no chance for him to actually be, be the Superman, Superman that we know. Because <laughs> yeah. it just that dove into Batman v Superman, where he was the enemy mm-hmm. of, of Batman. And mm-hmm. so he never got his movie to just be Superman. Yeah. So that's frustrating, and that, that was, was so poor, frustrating. Poor decision yeah. making on their on their part. Yeah. Um, that's why one of those I I you know this was so refreshing in many in so many ways because yeah. it was Superman, you know. Yeah, and it includes the way I, the a way lot I, of 
it, it includes a lot of the things that people love about Man of Steel, which is fine if you love it, more power to you. But it includes a lot of the things that people love about Man of Steel, as far as him like deciding about what he's going to do in his life and sort of the like darker themes. That's all here, mm -hmm. but somehow it's so much more palatable to me. And it could have definitely there's you feel the eighty five minutes for sure, yeah. but nevertheless, I would much prefer this. And this to me feels like Superman as opposed to somebody that wants to make a Batman movie and is forced to make a Superman movie instead. Mm -hmm. And, and also I just feel like man of steel was so sort of, uh, how do I put it was, uh, weighed down by the Nolan aesthetic that worked so well in the dark Knight films, but it's just not a good fit for Superman. It's, it's not Superman. It's not Superman. Yeah. And, just the belabored, belabored destruction and fight scenes and the constant Christ metaphors. I just can't take it. <laughs> I can't handle it. I don't like it. And, yeah. uh, and so uh, anyway, I feel bad for, for Henry Cavill because I, I really think he has a good Superman in him. But I don't feel like he's had the chance. Yeah, he doesn't have do hasn't had the chance to. Yeah, and yeah. so that's frustrating. And maybe in this new cut or whatever, maybe they'll let him do it. Who knows? But but anyway, and then you had Superman three, which I hate. Um, Superman three, yeah. <laughs> um, because I just I just think it's it's really embarrassing for Richard Pryor. I just feel like he to me it seems like he's drunk the entire movie. Like he feels inebriated to me and I don't mind a lighter tone. I mean, I love guardians of the galaxy for instance, but I, I just, I don't know. I feel like he seems drunk the entire movie and that's awkward mm -hmm. to me instead of being funny. It's just like, Oh yeah. yeah. And I don't like all of a sudden having Elena instead of Lois. Right. Yeah. I don't like that. Um, so I don't like Superman three and then Superman four is, is notorious yeah. for just being, yeah. One of the worst movies ever. Right. Yeah. And, it's one of yeah. my least favorite comic book movies I've ever seen. And I feel so sad because, uh, you know, it's just a bummer that that's how Christopher Reeve and, um, that they, cause it, if they had gone out with Superman three, at least Superman three has the, has the uh, angry Superman them fighting, which is kind of fun that scene. Uh, yeah. But Superman four, it's rough. I mean, they didn't it have any. Is. They got their budget cut. They didn't hardly have anything. Yeah, it's um, rough. But Nuclear Man is pretty bad, and uh, so yeah, that's a bummer. And then, what do you think of Superman Returns? What do you think of that one? You know, I had that? mixed feelings about Superman Returns. I, I, I was happy that they tried to, that they really were paying homage to the Richard Donner, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Superman, Superman films. I didn't really love the storyline, uh, mm -hmm. but but uh, I, I I appreciate what they were, I appreciate what they were trying to do, and and for me it was only kind of like halfway there. What did what did you think? I basically agree. I mean, it has some really fun scenes, like yes. when he yeah. rescues the plane. I think that whole scene is really oh, good. It's so classic Superman, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I like Brandon Routh. I think he's really good. And uh, I I just cannot abide with them deciding to make Lois a bitter single mom. Why did they do that? See, I think it was so bizarre. I I had I had real problems with 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 some of the story. Yeah, yeah. the way and, they went, it just yeah. It, and and I mean, I do think that I mean I know it's unpopular to to praise anything about Kevin Spacey these days, but. I do think that his performance as Lex Luthor is probably outside of Smallville, probably the best Lex Luthor we've ever had. He was a good Lex. He was a good Lex Luthor. I yeah. know. I know. I know. We can't talk about him, but but <laughs> but still, he. I thought. I agree. I thought. I thought he was very good in the role. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's kind of our history. Did you watch? Uh, were you someone who watched the Batman the animated series? I, in the 90s. I watched I watched Batman the Animated Series and I actually quite like Batman. That's oh, so the good. Series. I love it. Uh, yeah. I mean I have such respect for Bruce Tim and and uh, I thought they just they created something really special. Again, yeah. super dark, but for but it worked for me. You know, it really it, it, for me I thought I thought it was 
I thought it was terrific. Yeah, I agree uh, with you. I think it, it it really is Batman for me. Like yes. if someone was going to, I mean, I love Mask of the Phantasm, but I really, it's kind of just grouped in with the animated series. Mm-hmm. I like it way more than any other iteration of Batman that's ever been done. Yeah. Uh, it's my favorite. So there we go. And I, I, I really do love it. So uh, that's kind of our history with these things. I love Wonder Woman as well. Uh, I was uh, just, I really was moved by that film and so yeah there's been some interesting films from dc but let's dive in and let's talk about this particular movie yes it's uh superman man of tomorrow and the reason why i picked this one out of all of the ones to talk about because we've talked about for a while doing one of these dc animated yes, universe exactly uh films and the reason why i picked this one was because uh my friend durbin uh chris uh, over at Jabania, he had really praised it over on his channel he does theological analysis and uh, reviews a lot of dc and marvel films and he really loved it and so uh, that that's why i thought oh maybe this would be a fun one to do and overall how did you how do you feel about it what did you think well i'm so glad that you, you that we started our discussion talking about you know these live action films because I'm, I'm more well versed in those than these other DC films like you know that we've talked about the DC direct to video uh, uh, DC universe animated original movies mm-hmm. but uh, this one was really fun I, yeah. overall there's some things I didn't really like about it but I it was all I just felt like this is the Superman movie I've been overall I've been wanting because there's not I didn't love everything about this which I know we'll get into but but uh, it just it just felt like Superman and yeah. And uh, I liked to how, it, in a way, it was a bit of an origin film. It wasn't necessarily retelling it. It was talking about just some certain components of his childhood, which I like. I, I, I thought that I thought that the, the narrative worked, and and overall, I, I you know, it was I, it was fun. I enjoyed yeah, it. It was really good. I agree. I really enjoyed it as well. I have my flaws with it, but overall, I I really liked it. And uh, I walked away really satisfied. Mm -hmm. Uh, It starts out, you get this origin story and you see young Clark and his parents, the mom, Pa Kent, they're very worried about him. And I just thought, not not to belabor the comparisons to Man of Steel, but I thought this was so much more successful in conveying that kind of worry than than in that film. Because they never take away his agency of what is what does he feel is right what does he think is right to mm-hmm. do and uh, and they they allow him to him to make the choices which i appreciate as opposed to uh what we see with the whole i mean i i do not like the scene at all when uh when pa kent dies in man of steel and the the it's almost you feel like they are asking him to not only hide who he is but manipulating him uh to to not be the person that he is supposed to be and and not really training him out of place and helping him to make choices so that he's ready to make those choices Mm -hmm. yeah I really liked how Ma and Pa Kent were portrayed yeah. in this because it almost, the you know, it made it feel like it was more present day in a way, or maybe like yeah. the nineties or something. You know? mm-hmm. But uh, but it was, uh, it just seemed a lot more realistic. And I it, love it, the fact that Ma Kent makes him his suit. And oh, that is her me too. endorsing, saying, I support you in this. Yes. I support you in what you're going to do. I'm even like, I'm creating you as a thing. And but yeah. that was so great. I agree. And I thought that the, you know, kudos to the writers for making those scenes where Ma and Pa Kent are, are talking about it as a parent, mm-hmm. you know, as parents, uh, trying to like figure out what is going to be best for our, you're basically our child, right? Even mm-hmm. our adopted child. Uh, that just seems so refreshing. Rather than that's what I say when I mean realistic. I mean it's not. I mean it's, it's a Superman movie. Well, you know, yeah, real like, emotion. But yeah, but yeah, the emotion seemed authentic and mm-hmm. and uh, and 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 made sense within the context of 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 the Superman folklore. 
it yeah. didn't, you know, nothing ever like detracted like, oh, that would never have happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. I felt like a man of steel. <laughs> but but right. uh, uh, anyway, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm with you. I liked it. Yeah. I like I liked that, that component about it. Yeah. And so then they speed up and you get to meet Lois and Lois uh, is, she's fighting the corruption of Lex Luthor. And I, I do think that it, Lois is just so tough. She's so hard because she's the damsel of distress or she's kind of, I, don't know, she's, I feel like she's a really hard character to write. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they've tried doing the single mom thing. They tried making her whatever Amy Adams is. I don't even know. Um, but I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I, like I feel, <laughs> I, I, I'm not really hundred percent satisfied with what they do here. Um, I feel like, for instance there's just like little things that they could have made it better like uh when she sees uh you know people getting killed and destruction and she sees lobo and she sees all these things i feel like she's just still in reporter mode like you know i gotta write it down i gotta find this you know and i'm like Mm -hmm. come on any human being if you saw somebody getting killed you would be upset that would be traumatic like yes you're a reporter but you still feel things yeah you know and rachel i think maybe this some of this just shows my ignorance of of, of some of some of the dc um stuff and storylines but that they made lois like that the, like the newsroom basically hated her yeah and yeah. and uh not that she needed to be miss congeniality but but i just thought you know, like, where's Jimmy Olsen? Or, like, these people who were, like, her allies. Yeah. You know? And uh, that that part, I just didn't quite get. Well, she's I mean, just like just... a robot. I mean, you, yeah. you have relationships. You feel things. You, And so, yeah, that was a miss in this movie. But Yeah, it was a miss. Because, I like again, not that we don't necessarily wish to compare this unjustly, but I think one of the things I liked about Margot Kidder's interpretation of it and the mm-hmm. Richard Donner films yeah. is that she's tough, but she's human. Yeah. You know, she, she's, she's got some vulnerability as any human does, but, uh, but she's likable. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't really think that Lois came across as likable. The only thing that was likable about her is that, well, she's Lois Lane. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and she's, and she's fighting. She's of course on the side of right which is good, 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 right? I mean, she's on the, on, on the side of trying to uh, take down Lex Luthor, but, but still, I, just, mm-hmm. I never really found her. I mean, I guess maybe as it was going on, I liked her. I frankly didn't like her character design very much either. Kind of yeah. like, she was like goth reporter or something. I don't yeah, know. it's a I little dark. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so Superman, at the beginning, he saves the, the rocket uh from uh and uh and then lois is the one who actually gives him the nickname of superman at that point he doesn't have his his um suit uh, and that's yes. when his his mother makes him the suit and uh, and so there's kind of that opening scene and we get to meet lobo what do you think of lobo uh, i can't stand lobo <laughs> i just i was like that, that was the one character like can we please cut this character i mean I, yeah. honestly i mean he does bring something to the story but I, I didn't care for his yeah, character Yeah, he at was all. pretty irritating. Uh, he's this bounty hunter. Uh, he's trying to find the last Kryptonian. I do think that he could be kind of fun in live action, I feel like. Yes. Uh, that, uh, that I think if you were going to make him in one of the live action movies, uh, you got to get Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He just screams <laughs> yeah. Lobo to me. He does. No, absolutely. Yeah, That's right? a really good good call. <laughs> I, I like, I mean, I thought I thought it was cool that he was coming from, you know, another planet and that mm-hmm. and that uh I liked his his like rig, his kind of funky jet ski, outer space jet ski thing or whatever you call that, or motorcycle, yeah. you know. Uh but I don't know. I just and then also they used him as uh to bring profanity yeah i didn't understand it. that it was i didn't totally, understand that it was totally unnecessary to have yeah, the profanity it, it, it didn't add one thing no it was totally unnecessary and uh i yeah i agree with you i didn't like that at all and i don't know he was just a little much yeah for my taste much. me too you know one thing just just to quickly back up if i may when superman is saving 
Metropolis. One thing that I really liked about this too, I thought that the way Metropolis was animated was pretty cool and that it was, it was really a modern city. I mean, it, it reminded me, dare I say, of, of, of uh, Meet the Robinsons, you know, the, the, you know, the Disney pick, mm-hmm. as far as just this really funky, optimistic, modern city. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was not dark or gloomy or, yeah. you know, uh, the Daily Planet looked like the Daily Planet, you know, like it should, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> with the rotating globe and stuff on the top. But still, just, just, just the designs of the buildings and stuff, I just thought that was a, a nice touch. Not that it was just absolutely stellar. Again, it was all pretty flat, you know, as far as the animation looked, but, but I thought that was a refreshing take. Uh, yeah. you know to, to add on to this but but i thought i like that when superman you know was flying over the city to try to save save the, the rocket from demolishing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and so they end up i i like the whole scene with superman getting uh, energized by the yellow planet yes by the sun and you see uh and he then gives him the strength for for him to defeat lobo and they lock him up and uh there's also the scene where the goo is unleashed and that ends up uh, the janitor ends up getting turned into uh, the um, uh, parasite later on. Yeah. And uh, but I love the scene. Uh, we talked about it a little bit, but I think it's his. I can't remember if it's his mother or his, I think it's his mother or his father. But I'm pretty sure it's his mother. Says becoming a man means making choices, but be ready because each action has consequences. Mm-hmm. That is so much better than uh, you shouldn't have saved the kids on the bus. <laughs> right? <laughs> Man of Steel. <laughs> exactly. So much better. That's, that's, that's giving your child the, uh, instead of making the decision, it's giving him the agency and, and letting him know the gravity, but yeah. it's, it's giving him the agency to make the choice himself of what he wants to do with his life. And I think that's so much better. I'm with you, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so then we meet uh, the this mysterious man with red eyes. He says, I am yes. a bounty hunter. And it turns out he is Martian Manhunter. And uh, I, I really, I'd heard about this character, but I actually have never read a comic with him or I'm not familiar about the character. But I thought it was a really interesting character. Oh, I liked his character a lot. Yeah. Same. I, I'm not familiar with him. Uh, maybe you know his the i mean the character looked kind of familiar to me like maybe i did have have read something you know but anyway if they designed him in the way that he is in the comics you know that part i don't know but still i'm with you i'm really i'm really interesting cool yeah a cool character well because he so he tells clark he says to avoid humans the humans uh only we only think of our ourselves they only like people that are like us and Clark says, no, that's not true. That's not right. And so, so he's, uh, again, being, being confronted with this is the choice you have to make again and again and again, which is very effective to him as a character. Like people when they're just like, oh, he's just a Boy Scout. To me, that's not giving him credit for the number of decisions he makes to be that person, to be mm. the one, the sacrifices he makes, the, 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 that he yeah. decides of what he's going to do with this power that he has. And I, I think it, it, if he was just a Boy Scout, then there, would no, there wouldn't be that choice, kind right. of what he's doing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and he says to Marshall Man, he says that, uh, that if we remain hidden, it's not much of a life. Uh, and um, so he's, he's an optimist uh superman which is probably another reason why i like him compared to batman <laughs> right no exactly he, again he's, yeah. he's, he's 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 there's just something about his 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 uh his his innate goodness you know and then this is where we uh he's able to activate the crystal that he's had uh and he learns about his kryptonian heritage and he learns about jor-el and lara his parents his biological parents and uh and so that's a you know really lovely moment uh and uh he gets to kind of learn more about who he is which he hasn't had answers so that's really nice yeah 
Mm -hmm. And uh, so then we have Parasite being released. And this is especially the spot where I felt like Lois was on robot mode because I mean, she's seen Parasite just kill all these people and she's just I like, was just like quarter uh, mode. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> I was so frustrated with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that the, seemed honestly almost like it's kind of like lazy writing. You know what yeah. I mean? Just like, oh, we're just gonna Lois is just gonna do what, you know, anyway. Yeah. And Nothing Parasite sets uh, Lobo free, so he gets out. And basically anything that's sort of powerful makes Parasite stronger. Stronger, yeah. I mean, it's a really Parasite's a really good villain you know i mean as far as that goes because it's like how in the world are you gonna beat him <laughs> you know yeah i mean he has mars he destroys martian yeah and uh he's got the and lobo has the ring um the kryptonite the, ring uh, kryptonite ring yeah but it's not really working with parasite um and uh so it, every time that anybody tries but tries to kind of blow up parasite just gets bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger and uh and then so superman goes to lex luther and he says i need your help (laughs) uh that so that he can uh defeat this parasite and get he needs help to get into space so that he can get the power that he needs back um and uh and so yeah, that that they have a very tenuous alliance. <laughs> yes, exactly. As much of an alliance, yeah, that Superman can have with Lex Luthor. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's, I think that yeah. this is another argument against that he's just a boring Boy Scout because, um, I mean, and I love Boy Scouts, so stop that. Uh, but um, but I think it's the argument that he's just a, a boring, flat character yeah. because here he is having to work he has he is an all powerful character, and yet here he he has he has to work with Lex Luthor of all people, yeah. in order. So his powers only help so much, uh, and then he needs his brain, his uh, his charisma, his other things, and in order to make it work. And I, I agreed, yeah, you know, I, and and I thought this, yeah, same thing. This is just another good choice made you know is as far as like she has shown that superman is trying to be strategic you mm-hmm. know and, and and solve the problem yeah and so it turns out that marsh manor he's still alive yeah uh, and uh the um and he says you know that the the, the people in danger and he says uh i don't know any other way and then they says find one so there is another way to, to not, uh, there's, there is a way, find a way, keep trying uh, with Superman. And so then that's when Superman says, okay, I'm not, I'm going to stop trying to fight Parasite, but I'm going to talk to Parasite instead. And he's going to appeal to his heart, which just, I love that so much. Yeah. I love that so much. And me too. I thought I, that was really a cool way to, that's how they were because that's like how in the world are they going to be able to defeat him you know yeah like if yeah. they had had a uh a, a a time with time where 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 superman and zod had actually talked and uh and because both of their perspectives make sense and if there had been a way for them to actually sort of communicate how much more powerful would that ending have been um even if he did end up snapping zod's neck it would have felt more um i don't know it would have felt more meaningful because he will have he would have tried uh yeah you know he would have done all that he could and you knew that that was it and uh and so I think that that this is really beautiful and I love it that he appeals to Parasite's heart and he talks about his love for his family and his friends and uh and you know that you're a combat veteran with a family you're still the same as, as me we are the same appealing to his humanity all that I loved all that that was great yeah and yeah, uh agreed. yeah and uh, and he says, uh, and Clark says, I was scared, but I'm not scared anymore. And I just love that. 
And it worked, didn't it? Yeah, you know, because again, he he's got some again some of this authentic emotion mm-hmm. that just that, that really seemed to work work for the character. Yeah, you know, and 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 really, I thought worked well within the context of the story. Yeah, and then he's able to say uh, after he's able to defeat Parasite uh, in this in this way, he's able to say, uh, "My name is Kal El of Krypton, and I come in peace." And he's become Superman now. And I just love it. I think it's so good. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is such a beautiful journey. So then we have that as the power plant overloads um, and it attracts Parasite. Superman is too weak to stop it. Uh, and uh, Parasite absorbs the power and eventually sort of dis- disintegrates into the ashes. So that's, yeah. that's sad. You know, yeah. it's sad that the, I, I felt sad that Parasite, I mean, you know, that, that character had to die because we had met him earlier as that nice janitor. And right. With the wife, you know, he's leaving the a wife and the family. and But um, yeah, it was a sad deal. Yeah. But also, I, I mean, I guess in a way I felt, well, I'm glad they like at least killed him off because <laughs> it's not like he's going to be a horrible, kind of a hard come, life yeah. to live that way. So yeah. that makes some sense. And you, it makes some sense. Even though it's sad. Yeah. Uh, it's super, and then he just says, it's, it's Superman and my people are right here. And uh, so uh, I, I really enjoyed the film. I thought it was, it, it, it has its flaws as we talked about some of them and the animation could be better, but overall the story I thought was very solid and uh, it's where the kind of thing that I prefer in my superhero movies is this kind of story. So I really enjoyed watching it. Yes, so did I, Rachel. Thank you again for, for the excellent suggestion. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it too. And I and, uh, thought, so, well, in fact, I kind of wish that, well, I, I, that was some more of the DC Universe animated original movies <laughs> could, could be like this, or maybe I you just need to, you know, mm-hmm. you know watch some more and, 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 and see what I think. And I think that there's some nice voice acting. We we didn't really mention yeah. that, but yeah. Darren Chris as Plays Superman. Superman and Clark Kent, yeah. Nice job. Alexander Daddario, Lois Lane, Zachary Quinto as Lex Luthor. And yeah, I uh, thought he was good. Mm-hmm. What I did, did you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I, I really enjoyed it. So let us know your thoughts about this one and which are your favorite. Maybe you have some recommendations for us of ones we didn't mention or that are your favorite of the DC animated universe. I would love to hear your thoughts on that uh, in the comment section or on Twitter. That would be great. And we have a really fun one planned for next month for Obscure Animation. So uh, make sure you, you follow, subscribe to the channel and like this video video and Stanford where can people find you on Twitter I'm at Stanford Clark and I have a movie podcast and blog at moviespastandpresent.com great and you can find me at Rachel's Reviews all of our social media iTunes YouTube and on Rotten Tomatoes and also I am at the Hallmarkies podcast so make sure to check that out we are doing a lot of fun stuff over there so please uh, please check that out and uh, thanks again everybody and uh, make sure to check out our patron group which is a lot of fun. And also we have our merch store, which has tons of fun designs. So please check that out. And thanks again. And we'll talk to you all later. Bye everyone. Bye. Thanks.